Hi, and welcome back to On The Go with the Glenn Advantage team. I'm Marsha Glenn, your host, and we are here today with a very special guest. First, let me introduce, because we have some team members with us. So I wanna make sure that I introduce Jean Ferraro and Carlene Coda, who's with us from the Glenn Advantage team, but our special guest, where we're gonna get some real input in terms of how to work with your fur babies, is Mary Bradford from the Bradford Training Center. Am I, did I say that correct? Bradford Dog Training. You're good. Bradford Dog <laughs> Training. Okay. Um, here at the Piano Works Mall. And uh, Mary, let our folks hear a little bit about, or expand a lot, on what happens here at Bradford Dog Training. Okay. So... Um, we are the puppy center. Our goal is to train baby puppies, so puppies under 18 weeks. And um, uh, early socialization is the agenda. So that's what we do. Puppy classes, puppy play classes, getting parents prepared and ready and giving dogs lots of good early exposure and skills and training. Okay. So I can speak to the puppy training because I was yes. fortunate enough to be referred to you from a very good friend who had gone through puppy training with you. When I brought my little Michael in, who is a corgi, yes. and I've never had a corgi before, so I didn't know what to expect. I've had dogs, lots of dogs in the past, but never a corgi. And I brought little Michael in for the first puppy training class with you. And I have to say that you are indeed what I call my dog whisperer thank you you are so good with the pups it's there isn't a pup in the class that does not listen to your directions it's Aww. amazing the owners are like <laughs> we're flailing about trying to figure out what we're supposed to be doing with our puppy and how to train them correctly and mary steps in and takes the lead and they immediately do what it is that they're supposed to be doing. It's the most amazing thing that I've ever seen in my oh, life. Oh, wow, thank but you. Yeah. That's kind of <laughs> what I wanted you to kind of maybe expound on a little bit too and how important it is for that um, puppy training because the rest of my pups I never took through any kind of a puppy training. Yep. And once I brought Michael in and experienced what that was mm -hmm. in regards to actually knowing what you should be doing with your pup, yeah. how to get them ready for the world, so to speak, Yeah and ready to be living with you mm -hmm. as well, I was amazed at how much I didn't know. Oh, thank you. That's so, that was good, right? Yeah, That's it was really for. good. It was really good. So maybe you could expand a little bit in terms of, okay, a puppy class ends up taking place. How many puppies, types of, is there yeah. a difference with each training class, like the type of pup, mm -hmm. the breed? Mm -hmm. Do you try to mix yeah. you know, certain ones together that you know are going to end up Ideally, there's a variety in class because puppies need exposure to lots of different kinds of dogs so that they know, um, you know, what that they all are dogs, in fact, because they usually come from a family of dogs that look a lot like them. So knowing that other breeds of dogs exist is important and learning about different play styles. But then we also hope that they find some friends that are well suited to them so that they can play together and then they can practice biting each other through play, which um, helps develop what we call acquired bite inhibition. So that's a big piece of our program is in playing with each other. They're learning to bite more gently, which turns into dogs who are safer in the world later in life. Um, but also we're thinking about all of the experiences and exposures they need to be prepared to be an adult dog. And while they're little, they tend to be pretty socially open and interested in um, the world and curious. As they get older, they become more worried and a bit more uh, suspicious about what is happening um, around them. So we want to make sure that they're getting those experiences. They can reference them later in life and say, you know, I've seen that before. So I saw a scooter at puppy class. I saw a tent at puppy class. I saw little kids at puppy class. I met other dogs. Um, so there's usually about six puppies in class. And in play class, we have more, but we divide them up and we try to pair them with potential friends when it comes to playtime. But the rest of class is focused on confidence building, that environmental exposure stuff, and then skill building, which is what you're talking about, that idea of clear communication, because we're two different species. So we want to, as much as possible, make it clear for them to understand what we want of them and asking them to do things that they do, in fact, know how to do. You know, um, oftentimes we'll say they know how to do this. But then when we ask them, can you do this? They're like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so helping them actually know what the thing so is true. that they, 
Yeah, they, they learn very differently than we do. So being, um, you know, sort of stepping back and not taking things personally when you have a puppy, it's hard sometimes not to. Because right. It's hard, right? It's, it's, it's very it, hard. We're two different species. There's, there's a times when I was like looking at my own little baby who yeah. I know gets nothing but love and I think he's giving me the side eye again. <laughs> like, what did I do? Where did I go wrong? I obviously did something wrong today and I'm really sorry, but I don't know what that was. <laughs> but they have a different way of communicating right. with you and you just have to learn their what style. that yep. communication is that's coming from them to you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to communicate the way you do right. to them. Yep. So it's picking up on all those cues so that you know that you're keeping them safe and able to keep them safe because yep. you understand what they're saying. Yes, exactly. You know, Literally as reading their crazy body as that is, mm -hmm. you understand what your dogs are saying to you. Yes. And they yep. are talking to you all yep. the time. All the time. So. Through their body language, right? Yep. yep. So a at good student, <laughs> I I took notes and everything. I was I went home and I practiced, 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 and then we went from puppy training. Yes. What's the next stage that they go into? Which I had no idea. I know was really the case. It gets a lot harder. Teenager, yes. Yeah. So we go through a brief little juvenile phase, and then we're into adolescence. And adolescence is definitely the hardest it's hard for them we all remember being teenagers and i try to remind people that it's not easy to be them their brains are developing so rapidly they have hormones they have new stressors they don't read body language as well as they did before um they have worries that they didn't have before it's just it's hard to be them and then it's hard and turn for us because they tend to be more impulsive and more distracted and much more interested in the environment than in the relationship with us where when they're tiny, they're like little ducklings, you know, really mm -hmm. following you around. All of a sudden now, they're much more interested in everything else except for you. So your <laughs> job becomes being really clear and consistent without adding your own emotions to it because they already have a lot of feelings themselves. And right. it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. But when you right. know it will pass, Right? I always say, this too shall pass. I promise you, they all grow out of adolescence and become adult dogs. So you just have to remember that. But it's about a year. Yeah. So and it's a that, long time. That was the crazy thing for me <laughs> to kind of wrap my head around was, okay, I've got this puppy who would now become six months old and is now all of a sudden in adolescent stage already. Yeah. I'm, I was quick. very quick. Like, nobody told me this was going to happen when I first got him yeah. until I came to class and found out, <laughs> expect this to happen, yeah. and then come to further classes so you know how to deal with yeah. that, which is so important when, when you've got a new pup and you're really trying to acclimate yourself, your home, your family, and the pup, yeah. and have him or her not totally anxiety-ridden 24-7. Yeah. You've got to have some really good pointers coming from someone who knows what they're doing so that you can adjust correctly. Yep. That's my job. Yep. Help you get through it. <laughs> a, a little, a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are, what are some of the things too, as it relates to, okay, now we got the fur babies that we're loving on. What are some of the things that would be good to think about? perhaps ahead of time before getting that for a baby yeah. in terms of getting the house ready yeah. that you're going to bring them home to in order to make sure they're safe and that you're not feeling overwhelmed yeah. because of having not knowing what it was that you were supposed to do ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So puppy proofing like mad, right? So putting all the shoes away, closets are the bomb because you can just close everything away, uh, making sure cords are tucked away or not available to them. Um, anything that's like, you know, on a lower surface that can get pulled off, kind of putting those things away, remotes and, you know, all the like doilies and things that we put around the house, little tchotchkes, you want all of that stuff gone. Thinking about similar to like you have a toddler in your house, what things would you not want, you know, at their level? And then um, one that a lot of people don't think of is rugs because a lot of puppies mm -hmm. will potty only on rugs in the house. So taking up your little area rugs, um, especially anything really nice that, you know, any of the, you know, oriental rugs, nice rugs, <laughs> things you want preserved. And then anything with tassels is particularly interesting to puppies. Um, sometimes they get really into going under furniture and they'll pull off the fabric 
you know, on the bottom of a piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. So having a heads up mm. about that. And baby gates like mad. And probably you could say pressure melt them instead of like putting <laughs> holes in all your walls or something. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. lots of baby gates so that you can um, divide up spaces into smaller spaces so they can be more successful and you're not just chasing a puppy all around your entire house. Open floor plans, which everyone loves. Whenever what someone says, this puppy is so hard to potty train, I'm like, do you have an open floor plan? Because usually they do. It's a lot yeah. harder because they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. 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 So that was like one of the things that I was thinking about when I was bringing in. I had had two dogs mm -hmm. that I had for. They passed, unfortunately, broke my heart when they were 17 and 18 years old. So it had been a long time since I had a puppy. Mm -hmm. So in thinking about how to prep the house mm -hmm. in order to bring this new little furball into, keep them contained and safe, mm -hmm. and at the same time have them begin to learn what the house is right. and where to go it. and where not to go mm -hmm. and when to go and when not to go and that sort of thing. So do you think that in terms of bringing a um, new pup into the house, you give them a a specific area first? You can. Yeah, I think there's lots of different ways to do it. I always think extremes are kind of bad, right? So if the puppy's only allowed in a very small part of the house or only ever in the crate or only given total freedom, you're going to have all problems in any direction. So if the puppy's confined too much, then they don't actually know how to live in the house. But if they are given total freedom, they get a lot of bad habits developing, right? Getting into certain things or behaviors, you know, that you don't want them to rehearse. So I think um, the good rule is if you can't see the puppy and you're not watching them with your eyes, then the puppy should be confined. And then otherwise you're watching the puppy. It really is a lot like having a toddler in your house, right? Like you probably wouldn't let a toddler just wander off into other rooms and hope for the best. You know, right. you would follow right. them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's very similar. But um, unlike toddlers, they're super coordinated and mm -hmm. have super sharp baby teeth. So mm -hmm. they can be much yeah. more, um, you know, agile and, and destructive. Quick. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you really have to keep your eyes on them. So keeping them busy with their own things to do becomes a big part of that. But yeah. allowing it, making sure that you're allowing them to be who they are growing to yeah. be and it's a, it's always so funny because we talk about dogs like they're human yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're they're living breathing yeah. um creations yeah they're very so similar brains they're to ours. very similar brains mm -hmm. to ours mm -hmm. so how about in terms of what would be your thoughts in terms of like um is there a recommendation do you think for someone who is bringing a puppy into their house in terms of type of flooring that would be better. For sure. I'm probably the same things that people are looking for. Things that are easier to clean, right? That um, carpet is har probably the hardest, you know, yeah. having a really good enzymatic cleaner if you have carpet is like key. So the puppy doesn't keep returning to the same spot mm -hmm. um, or maybe having carpet cleaning <laughs> services done or something like that. But otherwise, the ease of cleaning is huge. And I know everybody loves that, like, Click lock floors now, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people have them for dogs because they're pretty scratch resistant and they're easy to, you know, get spills up off of. But yeah, yeah, no, all of um, my houses have had hardwood floors. It's like it has to has to <laughs> be because, yeah, yeah, it, it, the mud. I mean, even just the mud and the hair and all of it. You yeah, know, so cleaning the way that that kind of equates out to real estate needs. If you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Um, if you already have a pup or you've already had an animal, you kind of have a good thought process in terms of what you should be looking for mm -hmm. and what you should have within a house. But if you're just getting this new baby mm -hmm. and bringing them into your house, it's a really good thought process to have. Okay, what kinds of things do am I going to need to change? Mm -hmm. What might I need to end up putting money into? Mm -hmm in order to make this a better environment for the pet that I am now bringing into the house. And then having to think about, okay, what might I need to end up changing once I decide to leave this home and move on to another, what has made it easier for me to keep this home in the same condition, or what types of things should I put in that might add value mm -hmm. to the house in order to accommodate both the pet which you certainly want to make the best environment for, mm -hmm. 
and for yourself so that you're not losing equity down the road in terms of your real estate. Right. So some of those things too are things like fencing. Yeah. For example. So putting a fence in, let's say you've got um, a pet and you don't necessarily have the ability to be able to walk them as often as what you would like to do because we work. That's yeah. it. You, we're yeah. working people. Yeah. So putting a fence up does indeed end up protecting the pet because it keeps them contained, yeah. gives them the outside environment. Yep. And that fence for real estate, if you were to have to invest in one because you bought a house that didn't have one already, definitely does end up giving you additional value mm -hmm. to your house. Depending upon the type of fence, the value could increase. Yeah. Wooden fence, vinyl fencing, um, chain link, which is not probably one of the most used ones, um, wrought iron fencing, mm -hmm. you know, that can really create a really nice look for your house, mm -hmm. be safe for your pup, because mm -hmm. you can just let them outside. And also for that down the road, when you sell, if someone has children, for example, mm -hmm. it gives them automatically a backyard that becomes conducive to family use. Yeah. Yeah. So those kinds of things, putting hardwood floor, like you say, if it's a Gerlach floor that's an easy put together and it's supposed to last forever, if you're gonna change out your flooring, mm -hmm. think of what would be good in terms of the most resistant for the needs of your family mm -hmm. and any pets that you might happen to have. Yeah. I think those are all really important issues yeah. to think about when buying or thinking about selling yeah. your home. Yeah. And giving them that freedom to run around. Yeah. In your, they're great. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So that was part of, so to buy or to rent in regards to your real estate needs. Carlene, I know you have, you are a major dog. <laughs> Laura, the Glen Advantage team is love like dogs. all about loving on the dogs. I mean, we, we're just like beyond. If we could open up our own little farm, we would do so. <laughs> yes. But. Um, Carly, you have rescued a pup. Maybe you can give some, some background on that. And then the types of things that you were, once rescuing this pup, you had to now think about okay. in regards to your home environment. Okay, yes. I have a four-year-old pup. He um, has been with us for two years. We did rescue him. Um, and he loves to run so we are very happy that we have a large yard and so he plays fetch um, that was something that we had the house first that we were renting and then acquired a pup <laughs> um, through rescue Ooh. so we were kind of very happy that we already had the yard um, with the pup that came into our lives and so that is something to think about um, the size of the space that you're living in um, if you're either thinking of getting um, a dog to rescue or adopt or purchase, um, is that space that they will be able to utilize um, throughout your care and ownership of them. Um, if you are renting in a apartment or a smaller um, size or something that you don't have direct access to a yard, think about um, maybe how many floors you might be living up on so that the going outside to go to the bathroom is a thought process for you. Um, how the pet will go on an elevator or go up and down certain types of stairs. I know that my dog is a little hesitant on um, open back stairs versus a full set of staircase. So certain um, establishments that you're able to bring your dog to we're working through that with Mavericks. So again, you can place that into a renting um, situation so that you can think of what would make your dog more comfortable or if you're just thinking about getting an animal and you don't already have one, would this be a safe environment for my pet's nails, my pet's paws, things like that. Um, and then you want to think about um, if there are security deposits or separate fees for pets. Mm -hmm. um, monthly fees, you want to know those items prior to applying um, for the renting 
um, or um, if you are looking to adopt and you already have a lease under contract um, with a place, you want to make sure that you reach out to your leasing office um, or your landlord if it is not a complex to make sure that you communicate um, what type of dog you're interested in per, um, procuring or um, size or um, kind of habits. Mary, is that the right word to use is habits or maybe the temperament. vocalization temperament? Yeah. There we yeah. are. So um, kind of picking the brain on um, those items. Um, different breeds have different temperaments mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that you're allowed to have the dog that you are either inquiring about or have already mm -hmm. um, in your possession before you reach out to some leasing offices. They tend to have a lot of information on their website, so that's a good starting point, but also you can reach out to your realtor, you can reach out to the leasing office themselves and find out more information. I definitely think that that's one of the things that sometimes people don't think of between renting and home ownership. If indeed you're renting, you do have to, if you want to end up bringing a pup into your lives, um, or any any animal, you know, pup mm -hmm. or um, cats or whatever, mm -hmm. if you want to bring them into your lives, you need to know before you actually bring them there mm -hmm. that you actually can. Mm -hmm. So that's really important in regards to the rental portion of it. Make sure you know what the leasing rules are, mm -hmm. what the requirements are before you just go out and assume. Mm -hmm. And that is something, Carling, that, as you mentioned, yes. you can find out through the leasing office or um, if you're working with a real estate agent, you can find out through your realtor or the um, or on the websites, which is a good place mm -hmm. to end up going to as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you want to make sure you look at if there's an additional or an initial fee for a certain type of pet and then what that additional monthly fee on top of your rent would be. Um, they do tend to... Um, differ between dogs versus cats. Um, so you want to make sure that you're specific about that when you're asking those questions. Mm -hmm. And um, a number of. Yes. And yeah. then also making sure that um, there's any proof of vaccinations needed, um, proof of ownership or town registration as well. So that you have all the right documents to provide to your landlord, your realtor, or your leasing office. Yeah. So. You know, Jeannie, you're your grandma to two puppies. I am. Yes. yes. So, and they are living in a subdivision. Yes. In a single yeah. family home. Yes. Yeah. So, and yeah. that was one of the important and points for when you were looking for was. a home for it, your son. It has a nice fence mm -hmm. so they can just be let out and they run around the fence, you know, the yard. And so. Yeah, it was an important it, their point. Their exercise. Like, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Big things between home ownership and renting in regards to pet ownership or having one become part of your family. There are many things that you need to kind of look into and be sure of before you end up bringing that baby home. Um, some of the things, too, if you are in a association, town home association, there's association guidelines that one has to follow. You need to find out what those association guidelines are first. They could have some demands on number of pets that you could have. They could have demands in terms of um, size of pets that you could have, um, whether or not that's indeed going to end up uh, costing more in terms of the actual dues, whether or not you can or cannot put a fence in because it is a townhome and is part of an association. So those are true considerations that one has to keep in mind when you're thinking about bringing a baby into your home and making it part of your family. If it's a townhome and it has an association, make sure that you are finding out what those actual documents read and what the do's and don'ts are for that. For single family um, ownership and having a pet, it becomes a whole lot easier because you can indeed then put a fence up and, and be able to secure your backyard for them. You can have neighborhoods where you're able to walk freely with your um, pups. There are though town ordinances mm -hmm. that one has to find out about in terms of number 
of pets that you can have, number of dogs that you can have per town. Breed is also, check out the breeds that could end up coming into play in terms of each town that you live in. They have different stipulations in terms of that. Uh, check out in terms of the dog licensing uh, portion of it. And really know ahead of time what the thoughts will be if you're just buying or if you're thinking about bringing um, someone into your family as far as a pet, what you might need to do in regards to getting the house then prepped because you know you're going to sell it in, say, three to five years. So be aware of what those expenditures are going to be, what indeed is going to give you the best value and equity in the house, what should you put into it, and what would make living far easier in the long run in terms of that. I know three to five years sometimes sounds like a long time, but then it turns around and it's there very quickly. Mm -hmm. So you have to really have those thoughts in mind for how to address making life easier for everyone that's involved. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how is it that you ended up getting part of training? <laughs> oh what gosh. brought you into that? Um, so I guess the short version is that I took a year off of college and I was like, what do I want to do? Because I didn't like what I was learning in school. It wasn't happy in, in my college program. And, um, I just very much landed in dog training. So I ended up, um, meeting a dog trainer and I thought what she was doing was so cool. And so she said, come watch my classes and maybe this is something you'd be interested in. And then she mentored me, and I became a dog trainer. That's excellent. And that was 15 years ago. Wow. wow. <laughs> I, like wow. I, know. I know. I know. It's kind of crazy, right? It's like, I don't know. I think it's just kismet. I don't know. Yeah. So, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it is so cool. Mm -hmm. And I am so glad that you ended up coming into the training because it's the best thing that I could have Aww, ever been introduced thank you. to. And I'm spreading the word like crazy. Thank you so, so much. So I appreciate the fact that you have allowed us into your center. Yes. Today. Happy. Yeah. And the happy little center where all the pups are very happy when they come in here. That I can attest to as well. Yeah. And thank you very much for allowing us to kind of bring up certain points in terms of what to think about. Yeah. when thinking about being uh, becoming a pet owner or being a pet owner now and what you have to think about in regards to all of your real estate needs. And that's one of the reasons why the Glenn Vantage team is here. We are here for you. And we always want to make sure that you are looking to make the Glenn Advantage your advantage in the marketplace. Thank you for joining us today.